Hello, so this is going to be a video on modern masks I'd actually recommend for people who want them for prepping purposes or things like this. And these are masks that some of them might technically be surplus, but they should be very modern due to the manufacturing years of the masks, and um, I personally quite like these masks. Now, opinions might vary on some of them. The Polish MP5 in the bottom right corner is probably the most controversial where a lot of people don't uh, like this mask, but in my experience there's not too much that can go wrong with it, but I will cover those things in this video. So I'll go from top left to bottom right, um, the order of the masks. So in the very top left we have the Chinese MF11 or FMJ05 mask, and this is basically, um, I think these are coming out of Chinese military service now being replaced by the FMJ08, but for quite a while this was the Chinese military mask. Now, it's actually a really good mask, um, I've spoken quite highly about this before. Um, although there's lots of Chinese respirators I don't like, this particular one is actually really good because it's um, just very simple and very well built for a simple mask. It's got an exhale valve and a voice diaphragm um, and decent elasticated straps, that's basically it, but that's all you, write, um, you know, need in the mask. Right, top right, um, we have the Swedish... Now, they actually call it a military service, and this isn't the military service model, something like the Skeed Mask 90, which is apparently Protective Mask 90. Um, it's normally known as the Forshida F2, um, not, you know, on the, the surplus market. And there's two variants, the F2, which is the military version, the Skeed Mask 90, and the A4, which is um, this version, um, which doesn't have the drinking tube in, and you can't swap the filter ports around. It's basically the filter port is always fixed to one side. Other than that, it's exactly the same mask. Very, very high quality. Now, these masks apparently went into production in 90, hence named Skid Mask 90, and I did find another site that had some more information on them. Now, um, from what I understand is it was one of those sort of rolling um, production runs things, rather than loads and loads being built in a couple of years and given to the Swedish military. Uh, with the military versions, it's one of those masks where they produce however many per year and they constantly do that, so um, you know, you're going to probably every year get more and more going onto the surplus market, although you generally see the um, civilian versions sold on the uh, surplus market more cheaply and more often than the military ones. Um, but basically every year, obviously, uh, Forshida, which I guess is a rubber company that makes them, I couldn't actually find out too much info on the company itself, they produce however many versions um, for the military, and then I guess after so many years the military ones start going into the surplus market. However, with the only thing I want to point out is with the civilian versions, most of these are from the 90s. Now apparently they have a 20 to 30 year shelf life, which means they're probably just coming out of, um, you know, like military, um, or like what they'd consider to be good condition, you know, service life condition now, um, depending on if it is 20 to 30 years. I think, again, like most masks, it's going to depend totally on storage. I can't see this rotting or falling apart, to be honest. It's very well made, but um, just be very careful. With lots of sellers, they claim they're brand new, where in fact they're surplus from the 90s. Um, they're definitely not bad masks, but don't let somebody, you know, hike the price up because they're saying, oh, no, 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 it's one, it's, you know, literally like a year old or something. No, most of these are from the 90s. However, if you're getting the military ones, I guess they could be anywhere from the mi uh, 90s to like the current year, just simply because they're on a rolling production run, as far as I can tell, and Sweden's not moving away from them. But out of all the masks I own, and that's somewhere between 80 and 90 masks, I can't remember the exact amount, that is the most comfortable mask in my collection, at least for my face shape. Um, that mask is just unbelievably comfortable. Okay, bottom left we have the Avon FM12. It's the successor to the S10, so I basically consider it to be the S10 II. Lots of you will know I really like this mask. Um, in terms of quality, it's pretty much identical to the Forshida. Um, as I said, I personally find the Forshida slightly more comfortable, but I guess that's just the rubber in my face shape. Um, but the FM12 is a brilliant mask. I personally prefer the CT12, but they're very hard to get, so don't really try and look for a CT12. Just go for an FM12 if you're trying to get one. Now, FM12 is still being produced, as far as I'm aware. I'm pretty sure Avon's site advertises them for commercial sale. Um, so basically, um, if you think about the S10, it's like the S10 with a load of design improvements, basically. Um, it's probably Avon's cheapest mask when they sell them to companies, or like militaries or whatever, because it's, you know, the old-style filter, 40mm filter, 2 eyepiece mask. 
but that's you know your classic mask that works. It has a drinking tube on it that works fairly well as far as drinking tubes go. Supposedly polycarbonate eye lenses that sit further into the mask than the S10, so you get a better field of view with smaller eyepieces. Um, you've got your secondary voice diaphragm on one side. Now, some FM12s come with a swappable voice diaphragm port um, with a blanking plug, so you can have two filters on, one filter on either side. Um, this is the one with the fixed um, voice diaphragm, like the S10, but they do them in two variants, so when you're buying it, obviously, just check that. And bottom right, we have the Polish MP5. Um, this was the mask that was produced at the end of the communist era, um, as Poland became a free country. Um, it's licensed from a French mask, and um, I don't really have any problems with it. Some people don't like it. That's, this is now being replaced in Polish service, uh, service with the MP6. But as far as I'm aware, mask pole that makes this mask still makes it in limited quantities. Um, so you might be able to get some of these that are, you know, almost in brand new condition. Um, so let me put the masks on and I'll go through them in order. All of these masks will take 40mm NATO filters. So what I'm going to do now is just put an Israeli filter on all the masks so you can see for definite that you can put 40mm NATO filters on each of the masks. And I'll just give you a little talk over with, you know, it on my face of how good they are. Okay, so first the Chinese FMJ05 or MF11, as you can see, Israeli 40mm filter. So I will screw that in. Now, bear in mind, my only problem with this mask is I have the um, version that is in um, small. Now, if you're ordering it off of eBay, you can actually, now they're getting more common, you can um, often find ones where they have the different sizes listed, so I obviously wouldn't recommend getting one in small. Um, small is a bit uncomfortable for, to me, to be honest, but the mask does pressurise and it definitely works, and um, I can see how good a mask it is. So inside looks quite simple, you've just got your basic oral nasal cup there, um, your voice diaphragm and everything there. When I did my re most recent video on Chinese gas masks, I covered it there. 40mm port on the side. Because it's a Chinese mask, it seems to be a normalised port, so GOST and NATO filters should fit it fine. Um, now, how the Tissot tube system works, you've only got one Tissot tube, it blows up onto the this lens, and then it's reflected around onto the other lens. So you've not got a separate Tissot system for each thing, but you've got the reflector system most modern masks use. Uh, only thing I'd really complain about is the harness. The elasticated straps are good, but the harness is a bit basic, but you can actually buy these to completely brand new from the factory on eBay for 30 to 40 pounds or dollars, uh, which is actually pretty, you know, good. So um, let's get this on. All right, I'll do it up, but as I said, it's not a comfortable fit for me because this is obviously too small for my head. So I think a medium would fit most people's size, but uh, fine, you know, medium size would fit most people fine. But if you can, you know, do a check up and see if there's a measurement guide for this mask. So let's just get this done up. So the only really uncomfortable thing for me with this mask is it pinches my nose a bit, simply because um, I guess my nose is a bit too high um, on the mask where it should be. As you can see, this is what the mask looks like. The voice diaphragm is surprisingly good on this. It's a very simple one, as I've shown before in videos. Let me just get the cover off. The voice diaphragm is simply an exhale valve that goes around the outside, and the actual voice diaphragm is just a stretched bit of rubber in the middle. Primitive system, but it works absolutely fine. So let's get that back on there. So just to show you, mask pressurizers of an Israeli filter, so any NATO filter should work on this, so you're not going to have supply problems getting a filter for it. So I said, this is the most basic of the masks that I'm going to show you in this video, but why I like it is simply because of the fact that you can buy one brand new from China for, you know, like 30 to 40 pounds. The same price lots of surplus masks cost. So... No idea what their advertised shelf life of these masks is, but I'd assume at least 10 years. And, you know, like with most masks, you can go well beyond that and the mask will work absolutely fine. So, yeah, no real complaints. Not sure what kind of plastic they use in the eyepieces. I don't know if it would be good for airsoft or anything like that. But you get a good field of view for what the mask is. It's relatively comfortable. Not the best rubber in the world, but as long as it stands up to chemicals, that's the most important thing. You can get filters for it easily because 40mm NATO or normalised filter thread. And um, yeah, 
all in all, for the price, these cost very good. Now, there's a variant with the drinking tube as well. I don't have that model, so I can't say how good the drinking tube system is on these masks. But for what this mask actually is, you know, for £30 for a brand new one, or roughly about that, yes, I would definitely recommend an FMJ05. Okay, so now for the Swedish Eid Mask 90 or Forshida F2A4 because this is the civilian version. So just to show you again, this ready filter screws in absolutely fine. No issue there. Actually screws in better on this one than the Chinese one. But I think that's because this has a longer filter sort of um, port in it. So the filter goes in all the way, not just screwing into the seal. So let's get this mask on. I will point out this has one of those very nice comfortable head harnesses that most new respirators seem to have now. Rather than it just being a little bit where all the straps connect to, it's kind of more like a skull cap kind of fabric mesh thing. Um, very comfortable fabric straps on this as well. So, oh, just to show you the inside before I put it on, various, very similar system to the previous mask. Um, you've got your uh, Tissot tube that blows up onto one lens, then your nasal reflector with your oral nasal cup. Um, it has got basically a very primitive voice diaphragm in this under this cover. It's mostly an XL valve which uses the voice trumpet kind of system that the S10 uses. Now you can see on the bottom here where this would have actually had um, a drinking tube sort of system on it where they've got that sort of cover bit there. Um, and you also notice this one was made in 1994. Uh, this is size 2 which I take it is medium but as I said this is my most comfortable mask in my collection. So let's get this one on. Just do up the straps. Okay. Pressurized. Um, so what I really like about this mask is it literally suction cups to your chin. Or at least it does for me. So, um, you know, that means obviously you get a good seal with it. Uh, I've still got some stubble at the moment because I shaved about two days ago. So, um, you know... Uh, it makes a good seal despite my stubble, but obviously you do want to be clean shaven with a mask like this. Now, very, very comfortable, very good field of view. Big lenses, as you can see. Um, you know, very small bit between the lenses, so, you know, you barely even get ghosting on this mask. Um, but as I said, most comfortable gas mask in my collection. Only thing that could really be improved would be a better voice diaphragm on it. They could have done what the S10 did, and rather than having just a blank plug there, actually have a secondary voice diaphragm there for radio communications. But this is the civilian model after all. Um, but yeah, very, very comfortable. Uh, overall, a very good mask. Um, as I said, just don't get ripped off paying loads of money for these, because most of these on the surplus market are the older ones. Um, obviously, if you know you're getting one that's only a couple of years old, um, then, yeah, be prepared to probably pay more. But what I would do is buy it from a seller if you see one. These normally go for about £60 in the UK, but they're the ones that are advertised as new. Uh, like, you know, like brand new masks only a year or two old. So what I would do is I would personally um, double check it says that buy it, buy it from a site like eBay where you actually get buyer protection and then check the date on the mask and take a photo if need be when the mask arrives and then uh, obviously if it's not as new as they claim uh, see if you can get a partial refund on it. When I bought this one I was expecting it to be new it was from like I said 94 on there so I contacted the seller with a photograph of the date saying you know it says 94 uh, the seller was very apologetic, they said their supplier had given them all the information on it, which I think probably is true, because nearly every different seller selling these masks has almost the exact same description on them. And they said, would I like to send it back for a full refund, or would I like a partial refund? So I had a partial refund, got the mask for cheaper, and I love it. So, there you go. Swedish um, Speed Mask 90 or Foshida F2A4, this version, very, very nice. Okay, so now the good old FM12. As you know, I love this mask, so there's not much to say about it that's new. Um, but I'll screw the Israeli filter in. There we go, it goes in perfectly as you'd expect. Again, one of these very nice head harnesses um, with the mesh on. Uh, basically the exact same kind of Tissot system as the other two masks have had. It blows onto the lens closest to the filter and then gets mirrored around. 
So, you know, not much to say in that. Obviously, only that there's a drinking tube in this one. Because, um, you know, this is designed as a military personnel mask. Now, the good thing is, because FM-12s are still being made, and obviously lots of places constantly get take them out of service, um, you can now get them on the surplus market that are second-hand for about £30, ones that are apparently unissued for a bit more. Um, so I definitely recommend them for this that price, because it's getting easier and easier to get these masks now, and they're just basically better versions of the S10. The bottom two straps are the quick-adjust straps, um, where they've got that on. The other four straps are basically ones where you set them at the length you want with a buckle and then close it, but that's still easy enough to do with the mask on, so, so you put your chin in first, pull the uh, harness down, and then just tighten the bottom two straps, because if you previously adjusted the other straps it should still be right for your head, so it's quick to get on and off. So let's just tighten those. So, as you see, pressurises, very comfortable fit. Uh, not quite as good as the Fushida F2, but I think that's because the rubber on this is a bit stronger and less flexible. So you've got your lenses very close to your eyes that give you a good um, field of view. This is also quite good for looking down rifle scopes with as they're relatively flat frontal eyepieces. I would say the Fushida had a slightly better field of view than this, but there's not much in it to be honest. Um, so you've got your two sort of voice diaphragm systems, you've got the voice trumpet system under this cover. And then you've got obviously your um, secondary voice diaphragm there, which you can clip, uh, clip a radio sort of microphone communicator to. Not much else to say about this. I've been over everything with these before, but um, although the American U.S. military uses Avon M50s now, lots of U.S. police forces are using the FM12. You can see pictures of U.S. cops with FM12s on. So even if you're in the States, it should be a lot easier to get one of these in the Nest 10 because a lot of American um, you know, law enforcement actually buy FM trials from Avon. People are saying, how come my FM trials is made in the US? Because Avon, as well as having a factory in England, also has a factory in um, the US. So that's a simple reason, because when Avon got the contract to make M50s for the US Army, they basically had to make a factory in the US to employ US workers because generally the US likes to hire things internally like that and I think that's a good thing to be honest it's a British company but it's also hiring Americans in the US and making lots more of these great masks um, so yeah that's the good news is whether you're in Europe or the US you should be able to get an FM12 easily quite a few different European nations use the FM12 as well I think the Dutch do uh, I think Belgium might use these as well now uh, but in general, quite a few nations use the FM12. I have a feeling Italy might, because I'm pretty sure, at least with the FM12 or CT12, there's pictures of Italian soldiers with them on. But regardless, um, this is a very good mask. Um, like I said, lots of masks are getting to the panoramic lens, maybe not even being NATO filters anymore, designs now. Becoming a bit sci-fi, but if you want one of those sort of classic designs that works well, the FM12 is definitely one of them. As said, it's basically just a better version of the S10. Okay, so lastly we have the Polish MP5. So this basically went into Polish service, um, like I was saying, quite soon after the Cold War ended and Poland became um, its independent nation. This particular one, let's see if I can find a manufacture date on it, was made in 2010. So yeah, this is only eight years old. Um, now, lots of people have complained about aspects of this mask, but my mask has not had these problems. So. Um, I'll just get the filter screwed in so you can see that goes in properly. Now, basically, these masks have a NATO thread, but Poland made um, normalised filters, which is why I always recommend the FP5 filter, because you can get a safe filter that fits Ghost masks. The reason being, as I said before, is that because Poland didn't want to throw away all of its old um, communist-era masks, especially for reservist troops and things like that, um, but they wanted to issue a new NATO, because Poland's a NATO member, sort of style masks to their soldiers, um, what they did is, as they were producing these, they made a filter that would fit both masks, you know, so that gets rid of your supply problem, and then obviously eventually they'll keep cycling out the old communist era masks and replacing them with more of these, or the MP6s. Lots of people have complained about the visor on mine, uh, or these masks, I've had no problems with mine, uh, no discolouring on it. I believe it's made of polyurethane or polyurethane, or whatever they call it, not actually silicon on these. Um, as somebody corrected me once, but I've had no problems with damage to that or discolouring. 
Um, it doesn't distort your vision too much as well, like some silicon mask things do. Uh, the drinking tube is actually a fairly decent system on this. Uh, you rotate the drinking tube in the mask by turning um, the drinking tube connector, which is this one. And that moves the drinking tube inside the mask. Um, I'll just put the straps this way so you can see the inside of the mask. So, um, yeah, that twists the drinking tube around inside the mask like that. So you can get it into the position you want. Quite a good system, that one. Um, so what else have we got? You've got your XL valve on this side. Uh, you've got your voice diaphragm in the middle. Obviously your filter port at the bottom. One of the only problems I had with mine is these can be a little bit brittle, the plastic hooks where the straps connect to. But the ones I've got on here now are perfectly fine. So, you know, that's probably not too big a problem. Even when I had the snap one on there, I was still able to hook the strap on, the strap would still stay on, so it's not an actual um, problem in that regard. So anyway, let's get this mask on. So, it's the strange French system that they've got, as said, because it was um, a French mask they bought under licence. You put the uh, mask into your face like that, pull these straps over the back. With the straps over the back, you hook them over those hooks. Same system the M51 uses. Okay, so now it's just adjust the drinking tube so it's not in my face. There we go. I, I really like that drinking tube selection lever because it is good at getting it out of your face. And you have a mask with a panoramic lens, good field of view, works fine with rifle scopes as I demonstrated in the video before. And as I said, you can get some of these that have actually really new well within their service life on the surplus market. And overall a good mask. It's not uncomfortable. Uh, by any means, it's you know actually a fairly good design. Um, but as the Polish MP6 definitely looks better. When they actually hit the UK surplus market for not stupid money, I'll definitely get an MP6 and do comparisons on it with other masks. Because the MP6 looks a bit more like the S10 FM12 sort of Foshida A2, you know F2 kind of design of speed mask 91. Uh, you know US M40, it looks more like that kind of design again. So not loads to say about this other than it seems to be a good mask to me. As I said, there are things people have flaws with on the mask, but I've not really had any problems with it. And I've spoken with lots of people that don't have problems, because before I got this, half my Polish viewers said these were absolute crap masks, half of them said they were brilliant. And now I've got one, I think they're actually pretty decent, you know, so... Maybe it is somewhere in the middle, it's, you know, a perfectly serviceable mask. Uh, it's not the most amazing mask ever, but it certainly doesn't seem bad. So, if you actually want to get this mask, or the filters for them, B-Store, who, um, I'll, you know, he sent me stuff for free before, um, I'll put a link in the description to his uh, channel, and the main thing he sells that people like are the FP5 filters, because of course you can get the filters that fit onto the old Soviet masks, so they're actually safe to use, and actually a viable option. So, there you go, hopefully you've liked this video. Um, as I said, it really varies on the mask, but these are ones that you can get generally, gen, uh, generally in very, very new sort of condition. Um, you know, not very old, sort of still in service or only just leaving service designs. Um, you know, that are very good and I'd recommend. And all of them, of course, you can put 40mm NATO filters on. Very important.